Well, the last section in our chapter on functions is going to take a little bit of a left turn. There are going to be about three formulas in this section that you'll need to memorize. And what we're talking about in this section is distance formulas, a distance formula, a midpoint formula, and then we're going to talk about circles. So first we're going to look at the distance formula. Well, take a look at this graph, and there's two big points here. <clears throat> and you may not be able to see it, but I turned these points, I used these points, and I drew horizontal line segments, horizontal, a vertical, and then I connected them to give a right triangle. Because I'm asking what's the distance between those two points? And initially you might have thought, well, I don't know. <laughs> but if you, write, if you draw this right triangle, we can simply use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's label what these points are, the ordered pairs. This would be 1, 2, this would be 2, comma 1, and this one would be negative 1, negative 1. So based upon that, we know the distance, the vertical distance, and we know the horizontal distance, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem and get this, this distance. So let's do that. Well, this, you can actually just count this out, 1, 2. So that distance is 2, and then this distance is going to be 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we have a right triangle where the two legs are length 2 and 3. So the Pythagorean theorem says that, we'll call this A and B, so A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and we're looking for C. All right, well, A, I think I said was this one, and although it doesn't make any difference, we'll call this one A. So that would be 2 squared plus, this would be B, we'll call it 3 squared, is equal to C squared. So this will be 4 plus 9 equals C squared. That's 13 equals C squared. And what does that tell us? C is equal to, now distances we always think of as a positive number, so I don't need to put plus or minus radical 13. But that is the distance between these two points. Now in general, you don't want to have to draw an xy plane and plot the points and create a right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem every time. <clears throat> We'd like to be able to compute the distance between two points without doing this, having to graph it. And we can do that very simply. The distance formula. The distance formula is actually going to tell us what this hypotenuse is, what C is. But in the formula, I'm going to call it D for distance. So the distance D between these two generic points, x1, y1, x2, y2, is simply this a big square root, and you'll do x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared, all underneath the radical. Now you may say, well, I've seen that before, and we used to do x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. This is the only formula I think where you don't have to be consistent at all, and it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. You could do x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and you could, you could change just one of them, and it won't matter. The, 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 it's because you're squaring them. So, I mean, if you took, for example, 10 minus 3 squared and 3 minus 10 squared, how do they compare? 7 squared, negative 7 squared. They give you the same thing. Okay, so this is a formula you should memorize. Let's just do it a couple of times. I mean, there's really not much more we can do with it. You just give two points and you compute the distance between them. So for this problem, we've got negative four, nine, and one comma negative three. D is equal to big radical. And again, you can, you can do it in any order you want. You've got to subtract y from y and x from x. Make sure you do that. So, negative 4 minus 1 squared. That's this minus this squared plus 9 minus negative 3 squared, all under the radical. 
Now let's see if we can simplify that. Underneath the radical, we've got negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5 squared plus 9 minus negative 3 is 9 plus 3, which is 12 squared. So that gives us uh, the square root of 25 plus 144, which is the square root of 169, which is 13. <clears throat> so the distance between these two points is exactly 13. Okay, let's do a real simple one. Well, at least the numbers are small. So the distance between negative 1, negative 1, and 1, 1. So the distance, d, is negative 1 minus 1 squared, 1 minus 1, plus negative 1 minus 1 squared. That's equal to, that's negative 2 squared. And this is negative 2 squared, so 4 plus 4, radical 8. And we like to simplify our radicals. 8 is not a perfect square, but there is a perfect square inside of 8 as a factor of 8. I'll write this down. It's 4 is the perfect square. So we write radical 8 times radical 4 times radical 2. Radical 8 equals radical 4 times radical 2. And this is 2. 2 radical 2. That is the distance between these two points. Okay, that's, that's about all we can do. You'll use this in your homework. <clears throat> so, we're going to do, uh, in this video, we're going to learn one more definition. And notice what I'm saying in number three. In the graph up above, way up here, I'll show it again in a minute, what's the midpoint of the line segment that connects those two points? We could probably tell just by the graph. The midpoint looks like it is probably this point right here where it crosses the x-axis. Yeah, it looks like it's the middle. And what would your guess be? I think that, I think it looks like it crosses right in between 0 and 1, so it looks like 1 half comma 0. That's what I'm going to write down. That's the guess anyways. 1 half comma 0. Well, suppose you didn't have it graphed. Suppose you need to find the midpoint between this point and this point, or any two other points. They could be, you know, very far apart. How do you get the midpoint? Well, there's a midpoint formula. Let's take a look at it right now. Number four says the midpoint formula. This will be the definition. That's a comma right here. The midpoint of the line segment that connects this point to this point is, well, all you have to do for the x value is take the average of the two x values. How do you get the average? Well, you know, if you have an exam, if you have two exams, how do you get the average? You add them up and divide by two. Well, that's all we're going to do. So it's going to be x1 plus x2 over 2. That's the average of the two x's. Now remember, probably in every other formula we've seen, when you have an x1 and an x2, we are usually subtracting them. So we're not in this case. We have to add them and divide by 2. And then y1 plus y2 over 2. That's it. That's the formula. So let's just, uh, again, all we can do is use this formula. And so we've got just a couple of examples. Find the midpoint of the segment that connects this point to that point. And I may just say sometimes, I may ignore the word segment, I may just say find the midpoint of these two points, which point is right in the middle. So for us, it's going to be, maybe I'll write it down one more time, x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. And for us, that's going to be 1 plus 7 over 2 comma, 2 plus, oops, 2 plus negative 3 over 2. All right, let's simplify this. 7 plus 1, 8 over 2 is 4. Now what's this one going to be? 2 
plus a negative three. Two minus three is negative one, so it's negative one over two. That's the midpoint. Find the midpoint of the segment connecting these two points, negative one, one, and one, negative one. Okay, we've got negative one plus one over two, comma, now the y values, one plus negative one over two. So what, how does that simplify? Zero over two, which is zero, zero over two. That's the origin. And that one's pretty easy. If you graphed it, uh, negative one, one would be this point, and one negative one would be that point. You can see it's pretty clear that the origin is the point right in the middle of the segment that connects those two points. So this is the second formula that you should memorize. The di this is the midpoint formula and this is the distance formula.